So my name is Rogerio and I teach at the School of Computing at the University of Kent. And uh, this brief talk is essentially about soft engineering and uh, what topics are covered uh, when you teach soft engineering for the MSc in Computer Science. This MSc, MSc is a conversion course which is targeted for anyone who would like, without background in Computer Science, would like to pursue a career in Computer Science. And currently, you've got two specializations on this course. One is for cybersecurity, another one for artificial intelligence. So what I'm going to present in this brief talk is essentially about software and software engineering. As you know, software is everywhere. You are surrounded by software. All right. So most of the time, it works for you, but there are sometimes works against you. And uh, you are almost at the age of drink software, think software, write software. But right, the question is, who is going to develop all the software? Now, the current trends is that at primary school, children are looking at Scratch, are looking at Python. At the secondary school, they are looking at more complicated Lego Mindstorms, right? Robotics, Arduino, Raspberry Pi, right? At the university, what do you suppose to do or to learn at the university. So essentially, is how to develop software efficiently, right? Uh, reduce the costs, right? And uh, with high quality. But the issue is, how do we know that software does what we expect the software to do, right? Because the expectation, the, the gap between expectation and delivery usually is huge. So let's start from the, no, the engineering. So the, you saw what software now is it's engineering. So engineering essentially is the application of science and maths to solve problems. Essentially, engineering looks to find practical uses for scientific discovery. And there are several sorts of engineering. There is also soft engineering, all right? And soft engineering has been around for more than 50 years. So soft engineering is a systematic application of engineering approaches to the development of software. Now, and soft engineering, all right, is rather different from other disciplines, starting at the engineering disciplines, starting from the fact that soft is abstract, all right? Soft is different from concrete, bri concrete from bridges, from aircraft, roads, whatever, all right? So essentially, um, software, all right, you can do whatever you want with software. And... And, and, and the process of developing software is a mixture between repetitiveness and creativity. So from past experience, which is the basic of every engineering discipline, you would like to repeat the success, but avoid the bad smells. So since software is, is flexible, it's good, it's extremely good. So you can see the wide range of applications, you can see software embedded, but it can be costly and dangerous. And you're going to look in the, pro the next slide, you're going to look into this, things that can go wrong. So, and I ask you the question, what was the most expensive fireworks ever? I give a clue on this photo. And the, the, the most expensive fireworks ever, essentially, was the, 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 the destruction of the Ariane 5 rocket. Or it was the first flight of the Ariane 5, in which there was a bug in the software. All right, and led to a cost of approximately $370 million. All right, so there was a bug. I wasn't, the bug uh, was coming actually right from the requirements right, of, of, of the Ariane 5, right, which propagated until the execution of the software, which led to the self-destruction of the rocket. Right. So at the time, the inquiry panel, right, one of the conclusions, perhaps not written conclusion, say that Arian uh, Space had brilliant aerospace engineers, but very lousy software engineers. So unfortunately, this was in 1996, but more recently, all right, again, um, we have been, uh, there were some tragic accidents due to software failures. And this is very recent, actually. And some of you are aware of this. And these, I'm talking about the Boeing 737 MAX. And it's very, actually, it's a very similar, uh, very similar 
uh, kind of, 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 of fault or bug that occurred in, 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 in the software. Right? So everything started from the requirements. Essentially, what Boeing was trying to do with the MCAS, right, it was, it was trying to do something which air, the aircraft itself wasn't able to do. Right, so they're trying to supplement the, the behavior of the aircraft with some software. So, again, there were several inquiries, and it was very clearly that Boeing, as, uh, Boeing engineers were negligent, and the same thing as the FAA. Right, so there were two tragic, tragic uh, accidents that only now, right, after two years, as the, the slowly Boeing starts, the, the Boeing 737 Max starts going, start to be operated. So things can go wrong, not only with the product, with the system, right? Things can go wrong with the process of development, right? So it might be the case that the software is not even, the software never sees the light of the day. So the, pros, the, the software always developed takes so long, right? It becomes so costly that at some time, say, this is useless now. Let's trash everything. So what I want to, want to ask you is, what is one of the biggest trashed software systems? Now, you might be surprised with this, but it is a, a software system which was developed for the NHS, right? So this was back in 2011, right? And the impact, the losses there was about 12.7 billion pounds. And you can see from this diagram, right? Actually, right? is one of the, the, the softwares, right, which, uh, the trash soft, the, the software which cost, which costs mostly without any with concrete results, right? So, and you can have some other, other, other systems in, in the United States, all right, but this one is one that distinguishes distinguish itself around the world. So, because there are different software systems that I gave the example when I was in the first slide, right? There are different ways of developing uh, the software, right? So, this is the different way of developing software. You call it process models, right? So, the traditional initial uh, uh, development uh, development methods were the what you call the waterfall, the traditional engineering ones. But now, you've got this more agile methods, or even DevOps, right, which trying to put together development on operations. And the good example of this, essentially, is, 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 is a comparison between the, 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 the NASA, the NASA, the Boeing product, right, like the Boeing Starliner, right, which had a bug on the clock of 11 hours, which uses approaches, traditional, more traditional approaches, and you've got the SpaceX, right, SpaceX approaches, which now are able to, to, to produce a, a wide variety of systems in a very short time span in a very cost effectively because they rely on, on the notion of developing a system as gradually, right? Stage by stage. So, and that's the case in which recently the spaceship, right? Just exploded on landing, but actually it wasn't the problem. It was the problem because they learned from it. They learned from it and they gather a lot of data. So these are the new trains of focus, the development of, so of software right, based on agile, agile approaches. So another issue that's important when you're developing uh, software is not only the requirements, which was essentially the cause of the accidents right, of the Ariane and the Boeing uh, 730 Max, right, but is a notion of a soft architecture. Right? So, so soft architecture is like civil architecture. Right. So, in terms of software, what you're doing is you structure uh, the software systems in terms of the components and the connections. Right. So, on the diagram on the right here, you can see you're talking about boxes and arrows, and that's what it matters. Is one way of structuring, of knowing what are the key components of our system and how these components inter in in interact. Right. So, what's happening is that if there is a lack of a proper soft architecture there is an increase in the technical debt. And this is bad, all right? This is bad because this means what? That decisions which are made very early in the project may, may become extremely costly later on. So that's why we need to have, right from the beginning, not have a very good uh, requirement specifications, but also you need to have, all right, as a solution 
to the problem, all right, of those requirements, all right, you have to have a soft architecture, which is going to give a roadmap on how the system should be uh, uh, architect, should be structured. So I gave you two examples, all right, which we cover during in, in our in our in our in our modules on soft engineering. But there are other trends, and the trend is that coming up from this monolithic, big, huge, single unit system, you start breaking up. So you've got the service-oriented architectures, which is white right, based, for example, uh, old 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 the marketplaces with the Amazon is based on SOA, white right, software-oriented architectures, to microservices. Microservices is a is, is is a recent trend, in which you're trying you're trying to break up systems into small pieces. So, and this helps very much the notions of test-driven development in which tests are created before actually starting the coding, right? So, and this helps, right, that uh, to continuously testing the, 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 the code while developing the code. There is this notion of model-driven engineering, which is actually we are able to generate automatically code from diagram, from models. So there is no, there is no more anymore this need of writing code, but build up models, right? Um, that will allow us to generate the code automatically. So together with, with uh, DevOps, there is this notion of software continuous delivery in which the, the, the time to deliver, the, the time between deliveries is, becomes very short. It's not a question of two years, three years, but it can, becomes a question of months, right? And of course, there is new green fields ahead, like the self-adapter software systems. And self-adapter software systems uses engineering principles in order to allow that the software to adapt itself according with the change requirements, according with the changes uh, in the structure, according with bugs or even attacks. Or right? it's the notion of the, 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 the software is able to react to its environment. So, um, and so you reach the end of our brief, 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 brief talk. But one thing I would like to ask you is, and you are able to answer actually, or hope to be able to answer at the end of the course is as a software manager, if your software project is quite delayed, would you hire more people in order to catch up with the backlog? This is a question that affects a lot of developer systems being, software systems being developed. All right, still, so there is a lot of managers which still think right, that putting more people solves the problem, but is wrong, all right? So if the things start going wrong, all right, the, the, the solution of adding more people make it even more, 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 more worrisome, all right? So this is the type, the, the courses that, uh, the MSc courses that we offer and which uh, either software engineering module is compulsory, like in the computer science, all right? Or in the, in the specialized uh, conversion courses like artificial intelligence and cybersecurity appears as a uh, as as an optional module. And that's all for me. Thank you for listening.